from gardening to animals to extreme renovations. Welcome to homesteading at College Hill Farm. Welcome back to College Hill Farm. Today we're talking about identifying animal problems. Today we're going to talk about identifying our animal problems that we've got here in the garden. Now last year uh, if you watched our channel we had problems with uh, rabbits and groundhogs. Well I wasn't as proactive as I should have been. Uh, if you put off you're just going to mess up. Well this year we've got the same problem again because I didn't eradicate them last year. Well this year I've got to get rid of them. Uh, so far uh, all of my broccoli and cauliflower are basically gone. 90 plants. So what I've got to do is turn around and go okay you groundhogs and rabbits this has been your time that's over. I'm going to make sure it's over. So to that end, I set about setting out in the garden in the early morning and in the evening. Well, I killed two groundhogs and about four rabbits that were in my garden. But I saw four or five more groundhogs. Well, I don't have time to sit out here and wait on groundhogs every week or every day. I've got too many other things to do. So in that light, let's talk about what I'm going to do. And But first, I want to show you what the damage looks like. Here we are in the garden. Now, if you'll look right here, what you'll see, this is a broccoli plant. Uh, you'll see the leaves, some leaves are off the sides, but there's still leaves on the top. That's a good example of rabbit damage. The rabbits have come by, they've eat a few leaves, and then left a few. Well, they'll keep coming back and getting more leaves and more leaves and more leaves. But now right beside it is something else. If you see that broccoli plant, there's not a leaf on it. That is what groundhogs do. Uh, here's another example. rabbit damage. See, only part of the leaf here, part of the leaf right there is eaten. It's a rabbit damage. But you go over right here and you look. It's just a stub sticking up. The groundhogs have eaten it right off. So I've got groundhogs to deal with and I've got rabbits to deal with. So let's go back and talk about how I'm going to deal with those. Let's talk about how I'm going to deal with these groundhogs and rabbits. Well, first off, I could locate the den and use steel traps. Uh, I'm, I live in Kentucky. Uh, according to a Kentucky revised statute, I think it's 150.170, uh, a landowner can get rid of nuisance animals by uh, repellents, by uh, fencing, uh, by shooting them, by trapping them, uh, basically any way that uh, you can get rid of them. So I've got the option. I can shoot them, trap them, repel them. Well, to be honest, my garden is so big to build a fence around it that a groundhog is just going to climb over. It's kind of a waste of time. So, and a waste of money, lots of money. You know, it costs a lot for fencing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, trap them. And I'll show you what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna use steel traps. Uh, I thought about using conibears and finding their den and I about know where their den are is. We've got one over here in the goat grotto, but I've got one over here in this old fell down barn and I don't feel like going in there. So I'm going to use a, a, a cage trap, but will I turn them loose? The truth is, the, when it comes to setting animals out, whether it's cats, dogs, groundhogs, possums, skunks, whatever, in my opinion, anybody that does that is putting their responsibility off on somebody else. Let me say that again. 
anybody who drops an animal at somebody else's property that they don't want to deal with is putting their their problems on somebody else that's sorry acting so i'm not going to do that uh catch them in the trap then i'll send them to freezer camp just the way it's going to be uh, i don't want them to waste uh, crystal's not going to eat them you can bet your sweet dollar she's not going to eat them but a cooked groundhog a little bit of meat ground up the chickens will love it so that's where i'm going uh when I catch them, I'll dispatch them. I'm not going to sit around and stick them on somebody else. So, that being said, I've got a trap. Now this trap, this trap I've had since the boys were little. It's a little have a heart trap. Uh, we used to catch possums in it, called my eldest son the great white possum hunter. Uh, just playing around. Uh, we used to catch possums in them, different stuff. They'll do fine to catch a groundhog. And uh, when I catch him, we'll eat him. Now, I also, one trap is just not enough. I've got too many groundhogs and too many rabbits. So I went to Tractor Supply to see what they had. Well, they had a special going, $30. And you got this county line trap which is basically almost identical to the trap that I have. But inside of it, inside of it is a rabbit sized trap. So you get a rabbit trap and a groundhog trap at the same time. So let's get started and I'll show you how these things work. I'll set the one big, the one, because that's all you need to see is one. So let's talk about it for a second. Let's get where you can see good. Okay, let's talk about the trap for a minute. First off, the way you set it is you push this handle back and lift this up. Now, what that's gonna do right here, I don't know how well you can see that, right here, can you see my hand? Yeah. Right here is a little hook, and if you look, that little hook catches the trap right there. And the way that works is, that hook is connected to that pedal. And when that pedal is pushed down by an animal, the door closes. So it's real simple to operate. So I'm gonna get it set and then I'll show you how we're gonna bait it. Got my trap set. Now, how am I going to bait that? Well, first off, why did I set my trap where I did? Well, if you look over here in the grass, you'll see some little trails. That's where my groundhog has been entering and exiting. You can see the stuff walled down back in there. Uh, that's where he's been entering and exiting the garden. Uh, there's another one on that end and then a couple over here. So I'm going to set the trap near those trails. So now, what am I gonna do? Let's look at it. You gotta ask yourself, why is this groundhog coming to my garden? It's real simple. He's coming to eat. Well, what do groundhogs eat? They, they're vegetarians. But I tell you what I found. When I was a kid, we had a pet groundhog and uh, we caught several groundhogs because of what we learned watching him. First off, groundhogs love apples. Uh, they love uh, carrots, things like that. But what they really love is honey buns. Now they really love honey buns. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some honey bun to get my groundhog because what I don't want to use is a food that my cats, my barn cats are going to use, going to get in. So I'm going to use a honey bun. I'm not going to use a whole lot of it. I'm probably going to use half of this honey bun for this trap and then half for the county line trap over on the other side. And then I'll show you what I'm going to do for the rabbits. So I'm just going to take this honey bun
Take about half of it. And just pinch off little pieces and drop them around. Now Mr. Groundhog will be kind of nosy. Put a couple in the trap and then a couple at the back of the trap. So he has to actually get in the trap to get them. And let me show you this little honey bun, little honey bun, little piece of honey bun leading right up to the trap. Then there's little pieces of honey bun down in the trap. And then here at the back near the pedal, pieces of honey bun. So that's it. Now groundhogs are uh, daytime feeders, okay? They come out in the early morning, late evening. It's uh, the middle of the day. Uh, well, it's not really the middle of the day. It's about 9.30 in the morning. Uh, he's probably already been out here this morning, ate his fill, and is back in his den uh, getting ready for a nap. So what I did is I came out and I mowed around so it would make walkways where he goes. He'll stay close to the high grass. So that's why, that way I can put my trap close to high grass and, and get pretty assured that he'll find the bait. Now, let's talk about rabbits. Rabbits are not uh, daytime feeders. Rabbits feed right before dawn and into dawn a little bit, then they go hide. Then right at dusk and a little bit after dusk, then they go hide. So rabbits are basically early night feeders and, and uh, early morning feeders, way early. So if I want to get the rabbits, I've got to be ready for that. So I'm going to go ahead, set this other trap, and I'll show you the set, and then uh, I'll set the rabbit trap. Now, when you're going to trap something or hunt something, you really ought to know how they react and how they do stuff. So I know... And over there in those trees is where the groundhogs live. They've got a den over there. There's kind of a, I call it the goat grotto. It's kind of a low depression spot with some big rocks and they've dug dens in over there. So what they do is they come out of there, they come through this tall grass, and they've got little trails. And then what I did was I've cut mowed along this because this is where I get hay. I've mowed along it. And what they'll do is groundhogs are like us. They don't like to get wet in the morning. So they'll emerge out of that tall grass and walk in this part. But they won't walk out here next to the garden. They'll come along the edge. So what I've done is, as they come along that edge, right here is our trap. Baited the same way with honey bun. Okay. So that trap's ready to go. Now it's on to do the rabbit trap. Here's my rabbit trap. There's a little bit of apple out here in front of it. There's a little bit of apple in the trap at various points. Now, what's gonna happen, rabbits are not hardly like groundhogs. Rabbits prefer uh, semi-open areas. They like to come out where the grass has been mowed and pick up the succulent stuff that's coming up right after. So they'll be drawn over here to this area. Uh, you know, it still borders a little bit of stuff, but it's sparse. So they'll come over here looking for uh, succulents and they'll find apples and that ought to be the rabbits. Okay, all the traps are set. Now, a word to legality. I'm in Kentucky. This is May 2019. So the law could change any time. So be sure before you set a trap or something like that, check the laws in your state because who knows. Now, how long am I going to leave these traps out? I'm going to leave them out till I catch all the groundhogs because the only way I'm going to get broccoli and cauliflower now is for a fall planting. Just like last year, it's all my fault. I should have been proactive and killed those groundhogs. 
But this year, instead of two or three groundhogs, I've got five or six to deal with because they multiply. So being a homesteader, being a prepper means you should be proactive, not reactive because reactive is always worse. So if you like this sort of thing, this homesteading sustainability sort of thing, be sure to come on out uh, to our channel, subscribe. If you hit the bell, it'll let you know when we upload a new video. We upload videos every Sunday, uh, sometimes one, sometimes five. You never know. It depends on what all went on that week. So it's time for me to get on to the next thing.